The FDA just admitted that pentobarbital or euthanol may be a wider problem in pet food than previously thought. Like, really? Last week, there was a pet food industry conference in St. Louis, Missouri, and Steve Solomon, he's the director of veterinary medicine for the FDA, he was quoted as saying that the sodium pentobarbital problem and the contamination in pet food is more pervasive and much more of a problem than previously thought. In March, there was a recall affecting Kibble and Bits, Old Roy, the Skippy brands of pet foods. Um, and in particular focusing on them um, having fat or beef tallow contaminated with euthanol or pentobarbital. Steve Solomon said that you know at the time he was really surprised there hadn't been this hadn't been an issue in pet food in 23 years. Here it is showing up now and now they're saying there's new evidence that they're actually not even telling us specifically what the evidence is that it's more a pervasive problem meaning that there's more pet foods out there that have euthanol in them or they've done some testing and seen that and they're not even letting you uh, as a you know a pet owning pet consumer know what it is or what those results are the fda is currently working on sort of some draft plan where they can better monitor um, check for pentobarbital uh, being in pet food in the first place yeah, but this is just preliminary and you know that still you know leads us with the question first of all you know, why is there how is it getting there and how is this become a problem where it hasn't existed for you know 20 years. How are you gonna know if you know this supposed no-name brand of dog food, this no-name brand of cat food, you know, is contaminated? Is it safe to be feeding that to your dogs or cats? And man, it's a damn good question. I'm asking myself the very same thing. I exclusively feed my cat canned food. Um, increasing, I've fed a bit more canned food to my dog, and I, you know, I want to know, like, is this a safe food or not? Uh, Steve Solomon said that the rendered animal products may be a source of the pentobarbital, yet at the same time recognizes that these are a valuable source of ingredients for pet food and help deal with, you know, too much stuff being in the landfill. So what does that mean? First of all, it's illegal that the FDA is somehow condoning and allowing dead, decaying, diseased animals. Um, into our own pet foods and, and there's no control over that. I mean they have current regulations now supposedly banning that that can't exist yet here it's happening. So leaving you know me with the question of how do I guide you guys you know as well as myself I mean what is safe what do I feed my dog or cat and how much faith do I put put in the you know governing bodies in the first place. So what can you do? First of all, I'm gonna, gonna put a link below the video where you can directly email the FDA, you know, tell them what you think, that you, you don't think there should be diseased, dead, decaying animals being allowed to be part of pet food. You can be asking the FDA, why don't they enforce their existing regulations and laws as it's illegal to allow these dead, decaying, diseased animals making their way into pet food in the first place. Make some of your own pet food at home. Um, I've discussed in some of the videos an array of different recipes. I'm trying to do more of that for my dog along with my cat here. Um, and then third, also consider some of the raw feeding if you're gonna be feeding raw as well. If you're gonna be feeding commercial food to your dog or cat, just make sure you're going with one of the higher quality, um, more well-respected, reputable brands that haven't been subject to these recalls and are far, they're gonna be far more particular about the ingredients they're putting in their food, making it far less likely it's gonna be contaminated with uh, euthanol or sodium pentobarbital. Um, and yes, it's gonna cost more, but you can take a lot of heart in knowing it. It's probably a lot safer to be feeding that to your dogs or cats. And then the last thing is just, you know, avoid feeding this cheap stuff, especially this unknown, unnamed, brand of dog food, like we likewise this unknown unnamed brand of cat food. It appears from, I was just going back in the news reports, the bulk of the issues came from canned food themselves. 
So it may also well be that, you know, in the process of making kibble, not that I'm really crazy about it at all, but in some ways, you know, some of that processing, it causes if there is pentobarbital, it, it either evaporates or it leaves some of the product. So you're not dealing with as much there. Whereas in the canned stuff, you can expect, you know, a higher concentration if there is a contaminated food or some contaminated ingredient in the first place. Well, thank you guys for watching this edition of Energy Secrets. Um, I hope you found this somewhat helpful, informative, and more important, I just kind of let you know sort of what's currently happening and you know things you should be aware of and making your dogs, your cats safer and you're making some better pet food choices. If you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe to my channel. Click down there to like this video. And then when you click the link further in the box below and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free book, my free videos, on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.